What's up guys, today the Cummins is getting a major fuel system upgrade. So this is our 2007 Dodge Ram 2500 with the 5.9 Cummins. So the parts we'll be using is a fast 165 gallon pump, a fleece fuel filter delete kit, and also beans diesel sump kit. So we already have our fast fuel system partially installed. You can see the filters here and the wiring and hoses ran through, but nothing is connected just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and start by drilling a hole in the tank and fitting our new sump kit in. While we let that drain, we're gonna go ahead and start installing our fuel filter delete kit. So here's what the part looks like. Since our fast fuel system is gonna be bypassing the factory fuel filter, we no longer need it, so we're gonna replace it with this. The factory return line does run through the factory fuel filter. So these have holes on either end that you would attach your banjo bolts to. And there's a hole in the bottom for your water and fuel sensor. The kit also includes some crush washers for those banjo bolts and a plug in case you do not need that sensor. First, you're gonna wanna get yourself a drain pan. There's a yellow valve right here with a hose that leads down. That's gonna be your fuel drain. So go ahead and open that valve to drain all the fuel. Next step is to unplug your heater. and your water sensor. Now from the side of the truck, the next step is to remove the feed line, which is this one right here. You're gonna disconnect this quick connector right here with the blue tabs on it. Next is to remove the bracket that holds the return line. Now it is a little hard to see, but this is the bracket for the feed line, and behind that is the bracket for the return line. So if you look under the truck, you have your fuel filter here and your return line and your feed line right there. You can see the brackets there. So here's the nut for the feed line and then the nut to the right of it for the return line. So the easiest way of removing that bolt is that I actually use a deep socket. And since I know that the bolt for the return line is right next to the feed line, I went to go feel for the bracket on that feed line right there and feel the bracket till I feel the bolt and then try to feel around for the turn line bolts and then put my socket on it and loosen it from the back here. After getting that bracket bolt off, next step is to remove the return line banjo bolts on both sides of the fuel filter. So here's the one up here in the front and the one in the back is somewhere in this general area behind the housing you'd have to feel for it. To get that back banjo bolt, use a short 17 millimeter socket. Now, when you're taking off any of these bolts, make sure you're using a six point socket. That way you don't accidentally round out your bolts. And for the front bolt, you can use a deep six point socket. I'm gonna be adding an extra step since I haven't removed the factory supply line right here that's connected to the bottom of this this fuel filter housing, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that banjo bolt in the bottom. Easiest way to get to that banjo bolt is from the side of the truck and make sure to have your drain pan ready for that. Now we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove this bolt right here, this nut right here that holds this breather hose. And then behind that is our bolt. We'll take that out as well. After getting those bolts out, you can just pull the filter straight from under here and out. So I have it right here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this sensor right here and put it on the fleece block. All right, now the sensor is installed. I use a 19 millimeter deep socket to get that in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this in the truck. Side note, make sure to swap out your buckets before they get full if you are using just regular five gallons. And all this fill is with the fuel light on and the gauge on E. So if that gives you a perspective of how much fuel this tank holds, there it is right there. A little note before putting this on, Make sure that the old crush washers that were on these banjo fittings are off. As you can see, that one doesn't have one on there. This is what they look like from factory. So make sure to remove all of these everywhere. You do not want to double gasket these. Now the delete kit is installed, as you can see. I went ahead and torqued down the banjo bolts to 15 foot pounds. From factory, they recommend 18, but I read on some forms of people like actually like breaking these. I don't know if it's true or not, but I went ahead and stuck to the safe side and just did 15. Also, I taped up this heater connector right here all around 
That way no water gets inside and I taped it to this ground wire that runs through the battery. After doing all this, our fuel tank should be empty. All right, so we got the hole drilled out for the fuel sump. As you can see, it's all nice and clean. I went ahead and used this deburr tool, went around the bottom of the outside and then the inside of the fuel tank. I also went ahead and grabbed the rag and tried to pick up as much debris as possible. I pushed up on this basket and ran my finger inside to try to pull out any debris that got flung inside the fuel tank. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this inside the fuel tank, pretty much how it's gonna go. You can get half of it into the tank right here and kind of do a little of this and then it should end up inside the fuel tank. So let's give it a shot right now. So my phone died. I did a lot of this off camera, but going back to putting that aluminum plate in there, I went ahead and pushed the basket off to the side a little bit and from the opposite side brought that uh, aluminum piece in to lay it down on like that this side of the tank and just slid it under the basket here. And after that, I was able to get this all together, tying it down. Um, this is tying down to 22 foot pounds, by the way. And then these fittings are tying down to 25 foot pounds. So I got the lines ran. This one's the return line. This one goes here. I drilled and tapped a hole here to put one of these clamps in, but these clamps are too big. So I'm gonna go to the store and get some smaller clamps. Uh, so it runs through here up to the return side of the, the pump. Uh, here we have the supply line, or I guess, you know, the inlet from here. It goes on top of the brake cable here. A little concern might be the, the leaf spring, but since this brake cable's here from factory, I think it should be okay that this hose run, runs on top of it. And it goes to the inlet side here on the fast. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this factory feed line that goes through the CP3, which is this banjo bolt right here. Now in its place is gonna be this fitting right here. It looks like this. This is inside of a red baggie. All right, after putting that adapter on, there is a 90 degree fitting right here. You can install that right there. And then get that fuel hose, just connect it into here. Now everything's all plumbed up. This is all zip tied together. The fuel hose routes through the inside of the frame rail, all the way through, all zip tied, and up to the fast unit. All that's left to do now is to connect these connectors. So I'd have to get up in here and remove the connector on the sending unit. All right, it's the next day. We got everything all wired up and put together. We also went ahead and primed the whole fuel system. So the way to do that is to tighten this filter here, loosen the filter on the other side, just enough where fuel could come out of it and you would turn the key to run, but don't start it. You may have to cycle the key a couple times because the fuel pump will come on and it'll turn off on its own. But eventually all the fuel will start coming out of the filter and into a drain pan below. So once that happens, you just tie up your filter and it's primed and ready to go. Also, we went ahead and checked all the fittings to make sure there was no leaks and they're all looking pretty good. We did sprung one leak at the CP3, but we went ahead and tied it and that fixed it. Now we're gonna take it for a test drive. So right now I'm just gonna take it easy and just feel for the truck, making sure that it's not fuel cutting or anything like that. So far everything seems pretty good. So we've been driving for like a few minutes now and so far so good. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.